Good afternoon, everyone. I think I'm supposed to turn this on too. So, Derek, thank you for saving the most controversial topic for last. I wouldn't say best, but we are looking towards the next 50. But as all of us know who drive, sometimes you need to look back in the rearview mirror before you can move forward. Trinidad and Tobago has always had members of the LGBTQI community as part of its citizenry. As a matter of fact, our indigenous people believe in the duality of female and male. And when we were founded in 1962 as an independent nation, this national flag was actually designed by Carlisle Chang, a member of the LGBTQI community. And I'm sure if you think about it, you can choose in your mind a number of persons you know who have contributed either to your life or the national life and are members of the community. So one might ask, well, what's the problem then if people are contributing and they are experiencing their individuality? Well, unfortunately, what we also inherited from our colonial forefathers, as you heard earlier, were some other approaches to life in terms of legislation, religion, etc., that have created for us a very patriarchal society. And sometimes what that brings is a, a view to what is the feminine and it not being as equal to what is the masculine. And I'm sure you all know what I'm talking about because we read about it in the newspapers all the time. And this type of behavior is actually learned behavior because the Silver Lining Foundation, which does a lot of work in the school system in terms of bullying and anti-suicide, was actually formed because, and some of you may remember this, a young boy named George Kazanjian took his life at around 12 years old because of the fear of being seen or being bullied as a gay boy. And that learned behavior that we experience in school carries through with us into adulthood and how we view each other. And too often, that homophobia, that negativity towards the LGBTQI community is actually what leads to adult depression and lack of productivity. As a matter of fact, many members of the LGBTQI community experience life differently because of this nuance. Some of us are insulated because of our socioeconomic backgrounds or even our ethnicities at times because it's a very nuanced subject. But all of us experience trauma at some journey throughout our lives. Because imagine for a moment you are born into a society where through, either through the media, the conversations, or this learned behavior, you are told that you are not good enough, that something is wrong with you, that you are evil. Obviously, you are going to develop a complex about how you view life. And it has the, uh, the unfortunate probability of forcing you to not experience your true identity. And that means sometimes that you do not really excel in life. And many of my colleagues at school that I remember, and I think back now, and now that I know that they are members of the community, it, it dawned on me why they may not have actually produced at school and why some of them dropped out after CXC and why some of them went on to actually take their lives. Because in that moment, as children, you don't know about these issues in that way. Although younger people seem to have a, a better grasp than we did when we were that age. And then in the workplace, when there is no support mechanism throughout your life and you engage with others, you're already sometimes on a back foot because you have not been, you've not 
been empowered and you do not feel as strong as others do. You enter a workplace where some of these issues are even further reinforced. So what happens? You would see on the stage, the screen behind me, pictures of Raymond Chukong. So imagine for a moment that Raymond Chukong, an exalted icon of this land, said in 2018 when we hosted Pride for the first time, that that was the first time in his life that he felt comfortable enough to identify as a homosexual man. That is not fair because these people contribute to our national development and we pedestal them when it is convenient to do so. But imagine for his entire life up until that point, he did not feel that he could truly express who he was. And that is how persons feel who are even more vulnerable. So imagine that you come out of the school system because of these issues, you have not completed a university education, you are working in a low-end job, and you don't have any support systems. How then is someone at that rung of, of society going to fight against continued homophobia and discrimination, whether it is in general life or in the workplace? And if people want to talk about relativism, I've heard people say that Trinidad and Tobago is not as homophobic as, let's say, Jamaica. But the reason that we chose Mandela Park to host Pride is because Sasha Fierce, a member of the trans community, was brutally murdered there a number of years ago. And that case has never been brought to justice. And up to this year, during Pride, members of the trans community had to flee to Tobago because they were attacked in Curep. Now, we've met with the commissioner of police, and he has committed to creating a gender-based violence unit. And he understands some of these issues. So we are seeing some movement there. Many of the companies that I have either worked for or done work for have equal opportunity policies and inclusionary policies. So that provides some level of protection there. But you must remember that persons within the LGBTQI community are not protected under the Equal Opportunities Act. As a matter of fact, a few days ago in the newspaper, there was a matter before the EOT, the tribunal, which was sent away. So if these companies do not have these protections and something happens, it is tantamount to a woman facing sexual harassment issues and not being able to find justice. It is tantamount to somebody who is of a, of di a differently able status being victimized and not finding justice in the workplace. So what can we do as a society? All that the LGBTQI community asks for is equity before the law. Because at the end of the day, there's nothing special about the law. The law should suffice for all citizens. But there, when you go before the, the same tribunals that other citizens can go before, and they can find justice, but you cannot, or at a more visceral level, as in the case with Raymond and others, you simply cannot feel comfortable to identify who you are, even though you have achieved so much in life, then there is obvious inequality. So companies are urged that not to wait on the legislation to catch up. As a matter of fact, 90% of Fortune 500 companies in the North American region actually have implemented inclusionary protection policies ahead of their states at times. And what has this resulted in is the ability for them to maintain their human capital and actually build profits and, re and remove the potential of loss. Because when you lose capacity, you all know the cost of, of replacing that capacity. Companies have also implemented team building and education sessions where they would bring persons in who are studied in this field and they can actually facilitate workshops where we can discuss these issues. 
and also companies contribute financially towards NGOs and CBOs that assist these vulnerable groups. And what that does in a very subliminal way sometimes is it shows the members of staff that belong to the community within the organization that there is some level of support and they can feel more empowered and they can feel more encouraged to be themselves and not feign some other mask. I mean, we all place masks on when we get up in the morning, but I would like to believe that it is better that masks enhance who we are rather than hide who we are. So after 30, 50 years of these issues, the LGBTQI community actually came together two years ago and we launched Pride. And we actually show, we, we showed and demonstrated that this is not a small section of the society. And we cross every ethnic group, every socioeconomic background, and every territory within Trinidad and Tobago. We are your teachers, your attorneys, your accountants, your hairstylists, your decorators, and everything else that goes into the pot to make the country what it is. And as a matter of fact, we do have many allies, non-LGBTQI allies, but you all need to spread the word and sometimes stand up and speak out against homophobia, institutionalized homophobia. Because without your support, it will be very difficult for some of us to move forward in life. So whether it is the, the authorities at large recognizing the the fact that the laws that we inherited are either unconstitutional, and on top of that, the police system implementing policies to support and enforce protections for citizens, corporate Trinidad and Tobago also has to get involved in the mix. And what is acutely important to always remember is that we don't want to lose human capital. We don't want persons to migrate many of whom have because they fear for their lives or they, they, they don't feel that they can make it here in Trinidad. We don't want to lose life because people take their own lives. And we don't want to lose life because people never live a life. They live some other version of survival. So if we can do that together, I think that Trinidad and Tobago really can be the rainbow nation that we express ourselves to be. And we can see the benefits of an even more fully expressed society where persons reach their full potential, whether it is all the way through the school system into the workplace and contribute even more to our development. So I say this to you in the name of many icons that you all are familiar with, and especially the young people who are coming up in society. What is the next 50 years going to look like? Are we going to continue to reinforce stereotypes and misperceptions and prejudice? Or are we going to create a society where every creed and race truly does find an equal place? Thank you very much.